Hey, it's the Scotch Test Dummies. We got Del Bach. Del Bach, tell us about it, Bruno. You got the bottle. I got the sample. It's from Carino Ooh. One. Look how dark that is. We're going to test it. Del Bach in style. You're also showing the back of the bottle style. There's the front. Front of the bottle style. I got notes on the back of the bottle. Uh, from Carino One, shout out to Carino One, and he's actually hooked us up a couple of times with some Dell Box. Love the Carino and um, Love the Del Adventurous Stills. He sent us last time. He sent one of the I think it was the Dell Box Winter uh, Winter Cut or something, and then the uh, an Adventurous Stills release. But this, so this Dell Box though, this is the Distillers Cut. This is an annual release that they do. Each year, it's different. It's a single malt. Bart, you've got what casks. So they, they've aged this one in different casks. This is a blend, basically, of their juice. They've, they've distilled it. It's all theirs. And um, what's it been aged in, though, Bart? All right, we're going to get to that. I want to say, first of all, they've got, it's almost too subdued. You can yeah. see the cactus. You got all this. I'll read off the label here, but there's all this cool stuff on here. Did you have as much trouble trying to read it as me? Yes. Yeah. I, mean, I think they, I, I'll bet you the labels probably printed darker than they intended. I would imagine it's hard to read. So I was glad we had a little helper aid on here that was also attached. Someone knows my eyes are getting bad. What? what? Well, that, that bottle, though, I think now I don't know about last year's, but we've had at least one other distillers cut from Carino one. It was a different bottling. So this yeah. is a, this is a new bottle design as well for them. And the label is a new design as well. Yeah. there. Yeah. There's the older ones. You betcha. Right. So you got these floating around. Yeah. All right. And this is definitely obviously a new bottle style. So first of all. It's uh, 58.15 ABV, 116.3, I think it says proof. So this is Whiskey Del Bach Distillers Cut 19-3. Just seeing if you were mocking me as I was reading. Not yet. Uh, blend of smoked and unsmoked cast rank single malt whiskey. <laughs> Making fun of me. Mm. Finished in Madeira declassified cognac. I don't know what that is. I saw that on there. I don't know what declassified cognac is. Well, it means it was classified and then they declassified. They declass it lost its security clearance. That's right. It's no longer cleared to be called cognac. And extra, uh, I can never say this Spanish right. An Anejo. 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 Anejo tequila barrels. It's either um, extra, that means extra aged or extra years, Anejo. Extra Might years. Be, extra e years. Extra, well, extra aged, extra old. Extra old. Uh, I think it's extra old. Uh, retails for 85, distributed in New York, Arizona, California. 1,650 bottles uh, were made, released 2019. And this is Arizona whiskey, if I remember right. Yes, it is. Yep. They claim American single malt which they are, mm -hmm. and there's the other cast strength, uh, and there's the uh, winter release limited edition. So interesting that they changed bottle style. I actually kind of liked this look, but hey, who am I? Who am I? I'm a dummy. A dummy. Let me pour it. Now, what are you getting on the nose? It's a, man, it's a rich, dark nose. So many fruit. I mean, almost... Almost like a rich bourbon nose. There's dark caramels and cinnamons, but then there's fruits as well. Brown sugars. Just a lot of depth and a lot of richness on the nose. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, the brown sugar for sure. Almost almost smells a little bit of a little bit of almost like that Texas heat in there. Yep. 100% like a little touch of sage brush. Yep. Boy, you got to sniff careful, though. Yeah. I about got, about got too much ABV in the nostril. 
Well, for 58% though, too, I had, I did have my nose up in it pretty good and didn't really, what was that? Boy, I just got some evergreen, a little bit of, yeah, a little bit of forest. Yeah, a little pine. A little pine. Oh, interesting. Huh. It's got my mouth water. It smells great. It smells <laughs> rich, thick. That I does. Mean, smell thick. Someone out there is like, it can't smell thick. I smell <laughs> thick. <laughs> I smell thick and rich. Like when you walk out and the humidity's high. It's thick. There you go. Wow, you just I'm, did it. I'm going in. To go in. You just hit it. When, you, when that humidity is high. Ooh. Wow. Woo. Mmm. 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 Very nice. A little astringency. A lot of oak influence. That was my first sip. Ooh. I'm going to really look forward here to getting some more on the palate. Let that one just kind of and I just took a very small sip at 58%. Really kind of did Bart's trick of watering it down with my own saliva. <laughs> That's always palatable. <laughs> you were like, ooh. Somebody's watching going, what'd he say? He said water it down with his own saliva. That sounds disgusting. You're already adding water into it? Wow. Yes. I wanted to add a little bit. It got a little bit ABV sting on the tongue. I wanted to bring her down a bit. <laughs> Almost like horse's technique where... Where you start with the water down and build up to the to the cast strength, I, I think that might be a good idea. I felt like I had a little tongue stingage. You know what it was? It was a it was a taste of murder hornet. <laughs> How about that? COVID just kind of starts the fear starts to relax a bit. And my boy comes in, Dad. They got murder hornets that kill mice. And he shows me the picture. I was like, Ooh, that seems like terrible. I go, I'd shoot that. Shoot it. Sorry. <laughs> Went on a tangent. A little rabbit trail there. Murder hornet. Have you seen the like uh murder death kill bunny? No. It's a meme where they're mocking it. They're mocking the murder hornet. <laughs> I'm trying to pinpoint the palette. It's really nice. The um it has so much really kind of almost bourbon characteristics, <laughs> but I know it's a single malt. Woo. So much dark caramel, Woo. brown sugars, cinnamon, <laughs> spices. I inhaled. None of the corn sweetness, though. You're not getting that. No, I definitely get that that barley, that malted barley flavor is in there. Um, yeah, what you're getting, though, is definitely a lot more of that barrel char influence. At least I am. No, I'm, okay, so I'm going to go with the start. I'm going to start watering now. But I'm really looking for some of the um, the cognac or the tequila mm. influence. What was the first? Oh, Madeira. Was it Madeira? Is that right? Yes. That's probably bringing a lot of the sweetness I'm getting. I think I'm getting that. I'm looking for some tequila notes and some cognac notes. Well, the mm. cognac's going to be some of that, those darker fruits, grape type influence. So a blend of smoked and unsmoked cast strength single malt whiskey. So smoked and unsmoked. That's actually intriguing. And then, yep, finished in Madeira and then our declassified cognac. And then uh, the tequila barrels, the extra anjo. anjo. Anejo. Anejo. Not even close on my third attempt. I think the uh, the cognac is definitely there. I mean, that's bringing the sweetness. You can get the grapes. See, I don't know if I'm picking that up. The Madeira, probably aiding in there. I just, I'd like to find some of those tequila notes and say, oh, yep, there's the, there's the agave. Oh, yep, there's the cactus. Oh, yeah, there's the. I think in order for me to even start to get that, I would have to get one that was exclusively aged in a tequila cask. And then kind of like how, uh, you know, when we started picking up the ports and I was like, Ooh, yeah, I can get that, that wine grape flavor. The Madeiras, you're way better at getting that than I am. 
some of I was just on somebody's live stream and they asked about if I was looking forward or wanted to try some of the tequila. If Scotch was allowed to use tequila barrels, would I be interested in that? I'm like, I really I don't think I would be. Oh, I am. I want to see what it does. What will it do? Will it I do like my tequila and I like my whiskey, but I like them separate. It's not peanut butter and chocolate. They don't go together. We don't know yet. <laughs> We don't know yet. I wouldn't have thought that the sherry would have such an influence mm. on, you know, some of the whiskeys I've had. And uh, and then the way they were able to play with exclusive, you know, it's only been or it's been in that for 13 years or whatever versus two years. This is very nice. I've, I've, I've added water twice now. It really, I'm I like it better here than I do neat. And I'm still going to add a little bit more water, but it's really starting to penetrate the taste buds now. I mean, it's I can feel it even as I'm talking, like it's just slowly creeping its way towards mm -hmm. up here at the top of my gums. It's just slowly penetrating and moving back. Hold on, you're explaining a slow penetration that's moving back. Yeah. <laughs> You've been locked in the house too long, brother. Mm. I, I agree with you, though. The the water I put in helped out a lot. It dashed. It sparked on the tongue with that higher ABV. I didn't expect that at that at this percentage. Um, I immediately wanted to bring it down. When I bring it down, I still get a touch of the brown sugar, but I'm definitely getting the malt, the malted barley flavors that definitely are more reminiscent of a scotch over a bourbon for sure. And I'm just starting to pick up what I think are some of the cask influences you've been describing. And I wanted to put even a little more water in there. I just added another drop. I haven't gone back to it yet with the new drop of water in it. It's still, man, the finish on this is really nice. Really long. Lingers. I got a little bit of that, that, that Texas heat. I know this Arizona, but I mean, just that, that Southern U.S. heat. That sage, what 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 we characterize as a sage note. Yeah, it gives you like burning sagebrush. And there is definitely a touch. There's some ash, and it kind of feels sagebrushy. But again, sagebrushy. But again, I'm wondering about the blend of smoked and unsmoked cast drive. What kind of smoking are we talking about? Yeah, this is perfect right here. Three or four drops of water. This is still high, though. I still got to be close to 50% ABV, I think, maybe just under. But the mouthfeel is so rich. It's so sweet. So much of the um, that, that cognac and the Madeira cask influence is coming through. Um, the first one we got was 60.25%. I'm going to pour a little bit of that now. And see, that's probably 2017. I bet you. I don't know if it's got their the date on the back or which batch that one is. That one was very nice. I know we both really like that one as well. Very much so. This is DC 18 1. So it says, 18. Yeah, it says uh, 321 2018 non chill filter. This says non chill filtered as well. Mm. Mm. If I had that blind, I would be very confused as to what that is. I agree on that. <laughs> That's interesting. Less uh, sagebrush on the uh, the twenty eighteen Del Bach. More caramel richness. And a creamier finish on this 2018. That is quite interesting. Higher proof, less sting, which is odd. Hmm. Uh, very different between these two. Yeah, there's more of a creamy caramel in the 2018. And a little sweeter. And I'm not saying, I mean, I probably like that a little bit better, but I feel like 
definitely the sage brushes here. And then that, I think it's the Madeira I'm picking up because I keep getting little hints of, of light fruit, but I'm not sure I'm picking it up properly yet. Just a really sweet, really sweet fruit. Hmm. Now, obviously, we're still doing social distancing. Um, it's also convenient. This is nice. I uh, well, we haven't. We were our our, our stay at home order was lifted. We actually got together and filmed this. Right now is more out of convenience because sure, we I got home late. Yep, got home late. Uh, son's working on a project for school. He had to run in the store and get some stuff. And I said, "Hey, I'm out. Just let me pick up the samples. We'll do this." Um, but it, you know, I'm fine with it. it. It's, it's not my preferred way. I like having you right here, brother. I, I like you close. Yeah. Like you're close. But I, agree. Oh, I mean, this has, its, this has its pluses and its, its minuses, but I give this an 89. Wow. Yeah. Metal? Yep. Um, Did, so you like the, the other, the early 18 edition better. The 18 definitely hits me better currently. I like the creamy caramel finish there. Um, this one's still a bit of a puzzle to me. And I'm a little bit surprised ABV is less than the original. Um, but I definitely had to get some water to bring down some of that bite. So I'm not saying that's a, I don't know why that would even be. I mean, this is 58. Uh, 58. What was this? 60. I mean, they're close. Yeah. 6.25. Um, love, love, love this from first blush. Um, this I think is interesting, carries a little bit more character with it. Um, I almost think I'll let it oxidize a little bit and see, see what it does and how it changes up. That's what I was wondering. A little bit of air might start to bring out some of the tequila influence. So I still haven't gotten any of it. So it's either very light or it's not revealing itself yet. I gave it a 92. Uh, you got on there, it's $85. This is worth it. If you are near any place that sells it, buy it. Well, I love what Del Box is doing. So, and even this, this is excellent. Um, it's different. It's experimental. I love, love, love American single malts and what's going on in our country with them. Uh, so, uh, definitely what, what is so interesting is you're getting such a different experience from each one of these bottles that we've had that have come down. Um, I would say I'm so used to this style of bottle and that's fine. But I love the distinct, different, you know, kind of pocket feel of this old bottle. Obviously, I'm, we're just judging the liquid, but I like their look. And um, well, you can't see it now, but that's so much easier to read up on anything that you want to read up on the back label. Um, but like you said, I'm sure it came out a little darker than they planned. They got a bunch of cool stuff here. That if it wasn't written here, I wouldn't know what, what it said. So what else? Uh, let's talk about some uh, Patreon folks. Yeah, we had, yep, a couple Patreon shout outs to do. Yeah, we're, we've got so many folks coming in and helping to support the show that uh, it's going to take us a couple shows to get caught up. So be patient on that. When you support, you get a shout out. Uh, if you do $2 or above, we actually shout it out. Not just mention it. So what do we got? Uh, we got two brand new one dollar supporters that just came in. Brian Landfair. Brian Landfair. Thank, thank you, Brian. Brian, thank you. Golf clap. And Bryce Carlson. Ooh, Bryce Carlson. Thank you, Bryce. Ooh. Yep. Ooh, around the clock. Good. Now again, if you want to find us, you can go to Patreon. Look up Scotch Test Dummies. Uh, you can support uh, for as little as a dollar. Come on. We're worth more than a dollar. Go to scotchtestdummies.com. You can buy a Glen Cairn. You can buy one of our uh, challenge coins. Woo! The merch helps. You bet. Merch helps support us as well. Other than that, we're out. Wow. Scotch it. You scotch guys. Let's launch it. Yeah.